Well, hello, welcome again to a reading of the um, second letter of Peter, so called to Peter, and I'm up to chapter 1, verse 12. So, Dio meleso ie humas hupomimnescein peritutum kai per idotas kai esterigmenus en te peruse aletheia. Dio, for dia plus ho, on account of which, so for which reason, meleso is the future of melo. It's slightly irregular with this eta here, as though it was meleo, but it's not, it's melo. Same happens in the aorist. Melo in classical Greek almost always takes a future infinitive, but not so in biblical Greek. And we're only getting a, a present uh, infinitive here, and mellow can mean to be I'm about to do something or I intend. Now in English, intend has that future sense anyway about it, but the Greek is literally I will intend. So you could just say I intend always hupomimnescein to remind you, to bring it to your mind, to remind you regarding these things. And now we get chi pair plus participles. This is good classical Greek. Um, you don't see it that often in the New Testament, but it is good classical Greek, chi pair plus a partic participle. So, although, and it's agreeing with humas, although you have known it from oida, so you could say, although you are knowing it, and this is a perfect passive participle from ste risdo, uh, have been established or confirmed in the truth which is paruse, which is present. Uh, so it could be present among you. It's just literally in the present truth. I'll leave the commentaries to expound it further. Dikaion de hagumai f hoson amy en tuto to skenomati diagerain humas en hupumnese eidos Hoti takine estin he apothesis to skenomatos mu, kathos kai hokurius hemon, Jesus Christos, edelus en moi, spudaso de kai he castoti ekain humas metatain emain exodon, tain tuton menem main poies thy. So um, now Hey, get my is an epsilon contract verb. It's middle. It can mean to lead or it can mean to think. And you've got to work out the context, which one it is, or to regard. So it's the latter here. So, but I regard it as a just thing, as a right thing. F hoson, you've got to supply something like chronon here, for as much time as I am uh, in this literally tent. You could say mortal body, might be a paraphrase of this. It's literally skenoma. You get skene, a tent, and skenoma is another word for a tent. So in this mortal body, perhaps. De egerain, uh, is it, it means to wake up, so to arouse, to, um, so to arouse you, or to uh, wake you up. En hupomenese, from hupomenesis. It's a third declension feminine noun. So by this reminder, literally in a reminder. So N can have that sense of by, so by a reminder. Ados hoti, knowing that. Now the subject here is apothesis, the putting off from apotithemi. So it's literally putting off of my tent. That is, um, that the time of leaving my mortal body, if you want to paraphrase it, is takine is swift in other words it's i'm going to die soon so knowing that the putting off of my of my tent of my mortal body is takine is soon cathos just as also the our lord jesus christ ed de losen from de lo o omicron contract verb has made clear to me Spudasso, future from spudasdo, to be zealous for, to be work hard at, to be keen at, uh, so or to strive for. So I, I strive also on each occasion for you. Now, echo is a bit tricky here. Echo can have the sense of 
to be able to and I think that's possibly what it's got means here so I am I am keen on each occasion for you to be able now we go to infinitive here to poies uh, thy menemone and the tan goes with that for you to make a mention or remembrance of these things metatain emain uh, exodon after my departure now, exodos my way out it's a feminine noun hodos second declension but it's feminine ending in os and hence the, the feminine ad, uh, personal adjective here so just do this last bit so i am keen then on each on always so i'm always keen for you to be able to make remembrance of these things after my departure Uga sesophis menois muthois ex acoluthesantes ignorisamen humin ten to curio hemen Jesu Christo dunamin kai parousian al epoptai genethentes te sekenu megale otetos. For um, now the we've got to go the main verb is here and we've got a participle so it's um it's something like uh for not having followed um and it's taking this dative here acoluthio takes a dative so for and it's we from the main verb so we have not followed Aorist participle uh, words or stories that are perhaps contrived, cleverly made up from sophisto. This is a perfect passive participle here with contrived words or cleverly designed stories. So we and the U of course goes with the main verb. So we uh, did not make known to you. Uh, the and that goes with the dunamin and parousian so the power and the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ so it's something like not having followed after perhaps so not not having followed cleverly made up or contrived stories did we make known to you the power and presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, notice the order, it's always Jesus Christu. Al epoptai, but having become, this is a, a passive participle from Ginnamai, but having become epoptai, now this is a funny word, it means eyewitness. It does have a slight religious overtone, the those who went to stare to to watch the um, Eleusinian mysteries were often called the apopti. It's a, very, it's a classical word. The ones it's from ep, uh, epi plus the opt root from opsum I and so on. So it means ones who look upon and hence eyewitnesses. So here the writer is claiming to be an eyewitness. So having become eyewitnesses of his. Uh, megalotertos, just genitive here, um, of his greatness, of his majesty. Labon gar parathiu patros timain kaidoxon phones en ekthesis auto toias de hypotes megaloprepus doxes. I'll just pause there. For um, having taken or having perhaps received from Labon, from Lambano, from our Father God, honour and glory. And now we get a genitive absolute here, um, a comma might have been helpful, but you get a genitive absolute here, it's phonas and enecthesis. Enecthesis is a feminine uh, passive participle, it's from Pharaoh, that verb that is fairly irregular so the the aorist is enink uh, um enenkon, and then in the passive it's uh enik um thane, and this is the 
participle from that. So it's an aorist passive feminine participle um, going with phone. So it's literally a voice having been carried and the toy as d, this is actually feminine. Uh, it's alpha rather than eta here because you've got a vowel or a diphthong there. Uh, so it's when such a voice having been carried to him by the uh, glory, which is megala prepus, which is majestic. This again is a feminine. It's from megalo prepace. It's a third declension adjective. And this is the just, it's two termination, of course. So it's, um, this is just the ending here, the genitive ending. And then we get this quotation. Uh, so it's, um, it's something like, I think the labone, the subject of this, I think is Jesus. So Jesus having taken or having received from God the Father honor and glory, we would have to say in English, when such a voice had been carried to him by the majestic glory. And the reference here, of course, is to the Transfiguration, which is recorded in all three Gospels. So it's in Matthew 17, Mark 9, and Luke 9. And the quotation, it was, it's not done in bold, but this is the same words that you read pretty closely uh, that you read in the Gospels. So it's, Hophios mu ho agapetos mu. So my son, the beloved one of me. Oh, sorry, no. My, uh, sorry, I didn't put it wet on. It's um, uh, Hutos Estin in Hon Yu Dokesa. So it's this is my son, the beloved one of me. This is my son, my beloved, in whom. Um, so it's Ace for N. You get these interchangeably in Biblical Greek. So in whom I. You docasa, literally, I have been pleased, and often translated, I am well pleased. So this is the same, very similar wording to what you get in the three Gospels. So this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, and this is clearly a reference here to the Transfiguration. And of course, in that story in the Gospels, um, Peter was present, one of the three disciples that was present. Kaitautain, in fact, I think he says something like that here. Kaitautain ten phonain hemes a kusamen ex urani en ek thesan sonato ontes en to hagio ore. And we heard from the kuo, so we ourselves heard this voice from heaven. En ek thesan. Enekthesan, again, it's the aorist passive participle feminine, agreeing with the phone coming from Pharaoh. So we ourselves heard this voice being carried um, from heaven. Take that there. Uh, and then ontes sun auto, being with him on the holy mountain. So in, in the holy mountain, on the holy mountain. This is the dative from third declension oros, to oros, third declension neuter. Kai ekomen bebai oteran ton propheticon logon hoikalos poieti prosecontes hos lupno finonti en aik mero topo heos hu hemera di augase kai pros Phosphorus, uh, phosphorus and a tele entice cardias humon uh, tuto proton gignos contes u passa prophetea graphes idias epilusios u ginatai. Um, so, uh, and we have the prophetic word. Uh, and then by, uh, this is from Bebai Os, this is a comparative, more securely. So I think he's saying is because we were there, we have this prophetic word more securely. Um, now the ho is a dative, 
um, in, it's referring back to logon, I think. The participle here is pros ekontos, um, meaning to pay close attention to. So kalos poiete idiomatic. So literally, you are doing well. So it's you do well. Understand if typical use of participles here. So if you pay close attention to it. So to which paying close attention you do well. Like a look non a light, finanti shining. Uh, en eikmero topo. Now, eikmeros is a good classical word. It means dirty or squalid. It's also used of austere. Here it has the meaning of dark, which is not the usual meaning, although you can stretch it to that, I suppose. Squalid or dirty, and hence dark. It's only here in the New Testament, but it is a classical word. Uh, so, like a light shining in a dark place... Heos who, until, you've got to supply chrono here, of course, so until the time when, so until the hammer of the day, de algazdo, uh, a very late word, it's in Polybius, it's only here in the New Testament, and algae is a beam of light, so de algazdo is to, sh to dawn or to shine through, so until day uh, the day... Um, breaks or dawns or shines through kai phosphorus now this is literally the light bearer and it's uh, it's used of the morning star the phosphorus the bringer of light the morning star anatele from anatello uh, this is subjunctive here uh, and the so it's after heos these are subjunctives here, sorry, of course, because after heos, oo. So until the day dawns or shines through and the morning star arises in your hearts. Uh, knowing this first, that... Now this is a very strange verse and this you'll need to consult commentaries on this. The meaning is disputed. In fact, the exact meaning is not particularly clear. The problem is this word epilusis, this is the genitive from epilusis, which is extremely rare, only here in the New Testament. It must mean something like the unloosing or undoing. It's generally translated as interpretation, the exposition or the, the, um, the interpretation. So knowing this first, that all prophecy is not um, and then we get a genitive uh, of the interpretation of one's own scripture literally so knowing that no prophecy is the interpretation of one's own scripture that's the literal meaning of it so it, the, the meaning appears to be either that scripture is not a matter of one's own interpretation or it could also mean that no prophecy came about by the prophet's own interpretation. And I'll leave the commentators to discuss and debate that, but that's literally what it says. So knowing this first, that all, that, uh, all, all scripture, in other words, uh, all prophecy, now if we take it with the not, no prophecy is um, the interpretation of one's own scripture. Is that the best I can do with it? Uga thelemati anthropu anekthe prophetea poti ala hupa pneumatos hagiu ferominoi elelesen san apotheu anthropoi. Now he's very fond of this verb. This aorist, here is the aorist passive here, the uh, anekthe. The, the gamma has been uh, uh, is gone. It's, uh, you get uh, a nen con in the um, in the aorist, but in the passive, the gamma gets taken into the chi here. Uh, so it's, it's an irregular verb from Pharaoh. This is just the ordinary aorist passive. For um, uh, for 
uh, prophecy, propheteia, is uh, never uh, carried by the will of a man. So prophecy is never carried or brought by the will of a man, but, uh, and it's slightly, the grammar doesn't quite fit here, but um, men spoke being carried um, by the Holy Spirit uh, from God. So men spoke out, perhaps uh, from God, being carried by the Holy Spirit, without the article, also by Holy Spirit. And again, this is a slightly um, interesting verse. I'll leave the commentators to expound it a bit further. So it's literally, for no prophecy is carried by the will of a man, but men speak from God, being carried, passive from Pharaoh, by being carried along, we might say, by the Holy Spirit. And that is the end of chapter 1.